alone. So yesterday we discussed about classical evolutionism school. In the classical evolutionism, we understood about A. B. Taylor, Henry Morgan, James Fraser. So classical evolutionism complete school contributions we understood as well as individually also we understood. A quick revision we will do yesterday. So what are the main contributions? Number one, stages. The evolution is stages but not spontaneous. Number two, the racial superiority is a psychological myth. Third, Victorian society is one society where every other society aspires to become. Fourth, psychic unity of mankind. And the stages of evolution is from savagery to barbarism to civilization. Comparative methods. And the last is culture parallels and culture survivals. So, yesterday we discussed about classical evolutionism lecture number one. And today's lecture, lecture number two, we will discuss about historical particularism and functionalism. Two schools we will be doing. So, first school is historical particularism. This historical particularism is given by Franz Bose. So, this gentleman is Franz Bose. So, Franz Bose, he is a German born American anthropologist. He is a German born American anthropologist. But what happened as usual? So, atrocities were being committed on the Jewish, he is a Jewish person. So, he ran away from German and he settled down in America. And when he settled down in America, he was earlier geographer, but studying the books of Henry Morgan's ancient society, system and consanguinity of human families, he attracted towards anthropology. And when he attracted towards anthropology, he himself was very much interested and started studying about the discipline. He is called as father, guru, philosopher and advisor of American anthropology, means he was after Henry Morgan, if any anthropologist is there who is studying about the discipline of anthropology means he is Franz Bose after Henry Morgan, yesterday's Henry Morgan. So, originally he is an, he is an a geographer, a geographer turned anthropologist. So, Franz Bose Franz Bose, a German born American anthropologist, intellectual, organizing figure, professionalization in anthropology in the United States in the late 19th century and the early 20th century, means from 1880, 1880, 1890, 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930. He became very, very popular because of the discipline of anthropology. So, I am discussing about his evolution. His efforts, his personal efforts throughout the life with respect to anthropology made American anthropology popular. So, his efforts in the discipline of anthropology, because of his efforts, the discipline of anthropology became more popular in America. So, American anthropology has been evolved mainly because of one of the person called as Franz Bose. Studied science subjects, physics and mathematics. He is post graduation in geographer. He is a geographer turned anthropologist. So, his earlier his optional was geography, but he is not getting any marks. So, he shifted his optional from geography to anthropology. Geographer turned anthropologist. And the best thing about Franz Bose is he advocated for field work and he did field work. He did field work in Baffin Islands. Baffin Islands means Atlantic Ocean. In the Atlantic Ocean, he did field work. He is very famous for conducting field works attempted to do participant observation, but did not do participant observation, but attempted to do participation observation and he is the person who made rules and regulations how to do field works. So, he gave rules and regulations for field work and he is a person who did field work in Buffin Islands and he himself was a person who participated in field work. And these are some of the contributions of this person. So, this gentleman is called as Franz Bose a geographer and anthropologist, a German born anthropologist because of his contributions American anthropology became more popular. He introduced the study of folklore to understand origin and historical development of primitive groups. So, very important. He gave three concepts. Franz Bose gave, he himself individually gave three concepts. So, original school what we are going to discuss about historical particularism, but that historical particularism is given by Franz Bose. So, I am discussing about his introduction. 
and apart from historical particularism he gave another two disciplines or another two concepts one is called as culture relativism other is called as diffusionism so overall france both contributed to how many concepts one is called as historical particularism second is called as culture relativism third is called as diffusionism e tino mein iska contribution so first one what we will be discussing is historical particularism and he told that there are some societies there are some societies ancient societies from ancient societies the culture is coming on to the contemporary society today's society or we are borrowing from our forefathers we are taking from our history we are taking from our traditions so here one question came when there is absence of script when there is no written document then the culture how it came from the history to today how it came from prehistory to today how it came from medieval times to us so one doubt was been there so this person told that folklore janapada songs janapadas folklore he emphasized on folklore he told that folklores are the most important aspects of cultural transmission so whatever is present in the history it is present in today's society mainly because of folklore you tell me earlier times when there is no books when there is no written documents then how the people used to know about the cultures then how the people used to know about the independence movement how the people would know about their kings how the people would know about their village gods there will be village gods how for every function or any village festival is happening they will organize one pandal they will organize one folklore they will organize one program in that program who will come this folklore people will come and they will sing song complete night and by which they penetrate about their culture they say about their gods they say about their local gods so that particular cultural trans transmission was happening from history to today mainly through folklore so he emphasized more on folklore why i told this see similarly eb tiller emphasized more on religion henry morgan emphasized more on kinship fran james fraser emphasized more on evolution of religion and science similarly this person emphasized more on folklore so anything which is present in the history if we are coming to know about it it is mainly because of which aspect folklore aspect he was of opinion that oral traditions was the unwritten historical accounts of tribal society so every tribal i, I evolved from tribe you evolved from tribe everyone on the earth evolved from tribe only earlier we evolved from primitive society all all evolved from primitive society no one is born civilized first we were savagery then barbarism then civilization today we have written documents earlier there is no written documents then how we know about what happened in our ancient times what happened in our medieval times only through this folklore folklore traditions so this person emphasized more on folklore and he told that whatever present in the history is present today mainly because of one cultural transmission tool that cultural transmission tool is called as folklore the study of languages and linguists and second apart from the folklore he also emphasized on what apart from folklore he also emphasized on what he also emphasized on language he also emphasized on linguists means what see <coughs> we know that henry morgan protected the land rights of iroquois indians because of which he is called as champion of tribal rights the same lines franz bose also understood that if i want to protect the cultures of the tribes if i want to protect the cultures of the tribes culture is present in where language see how much ever english you know how much ever you are working in united nation organization or in usa or anywhere else you are you are having very good foreign languages but where your birth happened you will have your own culture so if you want to explain about your culture whether you can explain in english language or in your mother tongue each aspect of your culture if you want to if you want to explain about the each and every aspect of the culture you can explain in english language or in your mother tongue mother tongue see how much ever we know the english some words we cannot know so means what 
the culture is mainly embedded where the culture is embedded in language means what if i want to protect the culture how to protect what language so protection of language is directly proportional to proportion of protection of language is directly proportional to protection of culture <coughs> in this way he told that the study of languages you can open there you can open there and you can cross check historical particularism document so so in order to protect the culture how to protect what language so before him there was a discussion happening among the anthropologists so some of the tribal cultures are becoming extinct we have to protect the tribal culture we have to conserve the tribal culture we have to preserve the tribal culture in that way the discussion was happening in the anthropology field but no one emphasized that how to protect it and he is the first person who told that if i want to protect the culture if i want to preserve the culture i have to protect what language so he is the first person who made documentation of the tribal languages he made a record of the tribal languages he made the hard copies of the tribal languages so if the people get extinct if the culture get extinct also the culture can be protected why because it is present in the written format so he is the first person who had documented the tribal languages and responsible for the conservation of endangered languages mainly tribal languages bos was concerned with documenting american indian language i told you indian means american indian languages many indian languages means tribal languages many indian languages were on the verge of extinction and he worked tirelessly to have them recorded training his students and indian collaborators to collect language materials collection of language materials documenting of the language materials conserving of the language and preserving them hence he want to protect the language in order to protect the culture he spent much of his life seeking funds for researches and publishing the results of their work and was a moving force behind the handbook of american indian languages and founder and editor of the international journal of american linguistic so he is a founder as well as the main person who is behind the american journal of linguistics which is having the documentation of all the tribal languages of america by which if the people extinct also if the culture extinct also i can bring it back why because i have the document of tribal languages so when i have a document of tribal languages means i am protecting the tribal languages and culture is embedded in language the culture is present in words if you ask me about that when i am talking to you if you ask me about my culture i will tell me my mother tongue properly so whatever i am telling you are making a document so that means that the language is conserved when the language is conserved obviously the culture will be present in the form of so he also emphasized on language studies see contributions first contribution is what folklore second contribution is what and protection of tribal languages third his contributions on physical anthropology same like what are the contributions of eb teller what are the contributions of henry morgan what are the contributions of james fraser similarly here what are the contributions of franz bos first one first contribution is on first contribution is on folklore second contribution is on protection of endangered languages third on physical what he told see very important up to now the people were been thinking that the physical growth and development is directly related to diet what we consume accordingly our growth and development will be there 
what we consume accordingly our growth and development will be there but this person told that the growth and development is not only related to the the growth and development is not only related to diet but also related to psychological aspects environmental factors so for example i didn't clear my prelims you gave me biryani so how much ever i eat how many days i eat for next 10 days it will not go to my body why because i am psychologically depressed and that is my last attempt and I, my prelims itself is not cleared then what i will do so the growth and development the metabolism is not just directly related to the food which we take the psychological aspects and environmental aspects also influence humans growth and development so this is the first man or the in 1890 he is the first person who told that it is not only just diet which is responsible for physical growth it is also the psychological aspects and environmental aspects which are responsible for growth and those made a vital contribution to the related question of race and human variations to studies of growth and to research on hereditary and environmental influences his work lay behind the development of the new physical anthropology Bose has been wrongly accused of insisting on the primacy of environment in an effort to discredit hereditary as a factor of and he told that you people were been thinking that racism so white people are superior people black people are inferior people so it is just a physical appearance so that physical appearance is not only just because of hereditary the physical appearance is also because of environment so means up to now the people who were been believing that the intellectual physical growth and development intelligence merit all are related to hereditary is wrong there is another element which is also responsible for physical growth intellectual merit is what environment environment for example my birth happened in black family if my birth happened in negroid if my birth happened in dalit family they are socially backward they are economically backward so obviously i will not get good education so i will be weaker person but the same person if is given good parenting the same person given good education the same person given good food the base the same person if given good environment whether he will evolve or not so up to then in 1890 1900 there was a belief that the intellectual or or white people or physical growth and development all are related to hereditary but this person told that physical growth or intellectual or merit is not just hereditary but also environment surrounding factors means what up to now the white people were been building that we are white people we are superior people only we can have this you cannot have why why because you are a black man our birth happened in this so only we can evolve your birth happened in black so you cannot evolve that was the belief which was there in 1890 and this person told that the human growth and development or intellectuals or or merit these all things are not just hereditary in nature but also environmentally And the next contribution is what? Historical. Dusra contribution kya hai? Historical contribution. First one is what? Folklore. Second one is what? Protection of language. Third one is what? On physical anthropology. Fourth one is what? This is original. This is original. Why? Because sometimes we can expect a question right about the contributions of Franz Bose. Or write about the Franz Bose historical particularism. Write about the concept of historical particularism. Or historical particularism itself is 10 words. So now coming to historical particularism, he told that. Every culture is mainly because of. Every culture is mainly because of three factors. It might be your culture. It might be my culture. It can be India's culture. Or any culture. Any culture in the world is because of three factors. One is history what happened in my history is present in me for example in my history english language was present it got so it it evolved 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 and today in indian society english is playing a major role number two 
Indian culture is patriarchal system. Why Indian culture is patriarchal system? In my psychology and in my surroundings, male chauvinism is there, male dominance is there. So Indian culture is equated with what? Patriarchal system, psychological aspect. Number three, environmental factors. Whatever I eat, whatever the systems I follow is because of environment which is there from the centuries together. So every culture is mainly because of three factors. One factor is called as history. Second factor is called as First factor is called as historical connection. Second factor is called as psychological aspects. Third factor is environment. According to Franz Bose, according to Franz Bose, any culture is mainly because of three factors: historical connections, psychological aspects, environmental conditions. Mera history mein kya hai? Wo mera culture banta. हमारा पीपल का साइकोलॉजी क्या है वो मेरा कल्चर बनता मेरा एनवायरनमेंट कैसा है वैसा मेरा कल्चर बनता फॉर एग्जांपल इन माय हिस्ट्री इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज इज देयर और इन माय हिस्ट्री वुमेन इज ट्रीटेड इनफीरियर सो इन माय कल्चर आल्सो वुमेन विल बी ट्रीटेड इनफीरियर in my psychology my father my grandfather my brother everyone are treating women with inferior so the same psychology will be embedded in me in my environment my my house a woman is also feeling herself that she is inferior and male are superior so what is present in the psychology history environment will become part of <coughs> so franz bose german born american anthropologist he was regarded as father of american anthropology but because he was a person who pioneered the discipline of anthropology in america emphasized on field work traditions in anthropology historical particularism is also near to cultural relativism fourth contribution is historical particularism fifth contribution will be cultural relativism but this cultural relativism we will study in the syllabus 2.1 ethnocentrism versus cultural relativism there i will discuss but now i will give you rough idea so fifth contribution is what culture relativism he criticized ethnocentrism of evolutionists he told every culture is because of its environmental conditions psychological aspects and history no culture is superior no culture is inferior if they are inferior means it doesn't mean that you are superior it is because of the environment it is because of their psychological aspects they are like that it's because of your environment is because of your psychology is because of your history you are like this so every culture is because of these three factors every culture is because of these three factors hence no culture is superior and no culture is inferior hence he rejected the concept of ethnocentrism yesterday's example this girl who is a daughter of bureaucrats might be superior why because she got very good environment she got very good psychological thing very good parenting and history is good why because father is an ias and mother is an ias for here there is a tribal boy whose both parents are from forest he doesn't have very good environment he doesn't have any very good psychology so obviously he will take time to clear the examination so we should not tell that she is superior and he is inferior so every culture is unique in its context hence he is against what Ethno centrism is against what? If I feel that uh, my culture is superior, you know, we are white men, we are we are married people, we are intellectuals of the country. It's because of my environment, my psychology, and my history. You cannot judge other people. He, that the person is like that. It's because of the environment, psychology, and history of that person. so hence he told that every person is unique in their nature every culture is unique in its nature hence he rejected the concept of ethnocentrism and the term historical particularism is given by whom margaret mead he emphasized more on need for studying local history long stay with local people and learning local and he told if i want to study about any culture then the anthropologist should have a long stay anthropologist should have the local language anthropologist should study about their history then we can know the culture 
properly means what he advocated field work what type of field work i have to go there i have to stay there i have to learn the local language i have to be with them i have to understand the history then the cultures will be understood so these are the men of the main contributions of franz boas and next he told boas preferred empirical deductive approach rather than speculative inductive approach means he advocated you do a scientific experiment from that experiment what is the outcome is coming then you make a deduction rather than don't speculate and induct this people are like this because their birth happened in this caste we will have this prejudices or not the minorities are like this or dalits are like this or brahmins are like this sometimes we will have this prejudices or not so he is telling that there should not be any speculative inductive approach rather we should have empirical deductive approach means scientifically we have to observe it we have to stay with them we have to learn the local language then we have to come to a he was critical of comparative approach <coughs> very very important classical evolution is promoted what classical evolution is promoted what comparative approach but this person is telling what critical of comparative approach he is telling that whereas classical evolution is told that we have to compare to understand the cultures but the franz boas is critic of comparative methods why because if i compare tribal man bureaucrat when i compare then i will have a prejudices this lady might be a merit oriented intelligent when compared to this boy so i will come to one degree superior inferior i will make some grading why because this is happening mainly because so first you don't compare this person is unique in their environment in their conditions she is unique this person is also unique in his environment his psychology and his conditions so don't go for comparisons when we go for comparisons we will give degrees when we give degrees we will go for inequalities when we go for inequalities we will discriminate so better not to compare mainly with respect to cultures why because every culture is unique in its context so culture should not be related culture relativism culture should not be related why because every culture is unique in its and he introduced diffusionism field work research methodologies into american art means what he told he also told that the culture will be result of historical connections psychological aspects and environmental conditions apart from that he also gave another concept called as diffusionism culture will be diffused i will love to borrow rather than to create any topper copy is there yes please give me i will copy any ready made notes is there please give me i will copy people will love to copy rather than to create people want convenience crude methods but they don't want to innovate means he want to tell that culture will be diffused whereas whereas classical evolution is what they told independent evolution culture will evolve independently because of psychic unity of man can he is telling that culture will not evolve independently people will love to learn borrow copy diffuse the culture for example i am speaking in english language you are understanding in english language why because it got diffused so diffusion is also important aspect of cultural transmission so if culture is getting transmitted means mainly because of diffusion according to trans he trained entire next generation of anthropologists rc brown malnovsky ruth benedict croiber margaret next generation big 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 anthropologists all are his students 
in his book race language and culture proposed culture relativism i told you what is this culture relativism culture relativism means culture relativism means try to understand this every culture is a result of history psychology and environment every culture is because of history psychology and environment that culture is because of their history their psychology their environment similarly here by which he want to tell that we should not compare the cultures every culture will be unique in their context non comparisons of cultures is called as culture relativism if you compare the cultures you will go for a degree when you go for a degree you will give superiority and inferiority hence there will be discrimination so better not to compare hence that non comparison of cultures is called as culture relativism that concept of culture relativism is given in the book called as race language and race language and culture next thing both held for the use of anthropometry in studying human growth in meso america region and the most another important aspect is he was popular mainly because of studying human growth and development he told that human growth and development is not just because of hereditary but also because of environment how he came to a conclusion means he took measurements he used scientific measurements just blindly he didn't told that environmental factors also will influence the growth and development he took the measurements hence anthropometric measurements was been used for the first time while studying human beings so these are the main contributions of franz bos first one kya hai what is the first contribution folklore we will understand point wise point wise first one he he told folklore is a main responsible factor responsible factor for evolution of histories culture will be entering from ancient to today's only through folklores why because every tribal society doesn't have any written documents so he emphasized on folklore second one language he advocated for the protection of endangered languages why because if you want to protect the culture you have to protect the languages third physical anthropology he told that the physical growth and development is not just because of hereditary but is also because of environmental factors fourth historical particularism every culture is because of three reasons historical connections psychological aspects environmental conditions because of three, three because of this three reasons every culture is an output in that he emphasized more on history hence historical particularism fifth concept is culture relativism what is culture relativism we should not compare the two cultures when we don't compare the two cultures we will not discriminate hence every culture is unique in its context that particular concept is called as <clears throat> next anthropometry methods anthropometry methods next field works he emphasized on field work by doing long stay learning local language and staying with them for longer period next anything more diffusionism he introduced diffusionism these are the contributions of franz bose if there is only question about historical particularism what you will write franz bose he is regarded as a father of american anthropology because of his contributions anthropology has evolved in american anthrop in american anthropology or evolved in america full stop and one of his most important contribution is historical particularism second paragraph historical particularism is nothing but every culture is result of three factors historical connections psychological aspects and environmental conditions in which he gave higher emphasis to history so what is there in our history will become our culture hence that particular concept is called as historical particularism so two culture should not be compared why because every society's history will be different to other society so every culture is unique in its own context apart from this if it is 20 marker apart from this he also gave other concepts like culture relativism non comparisons physical anthropology folklore protection of endangered languages diffusionism field works finish this is what criticism 
what is criticism or two points are there in his book the mind of primitive people both established relationship between psychological aspects and body growth i told you gave for the first ethnography on quaketul indians he wrote his first ethnography on which which society quaketul henry morgan written on iroquois indians franz bose written on quaketul a tribal society it is called as quaketul while studying different culture groups historically bose was aware of the fact that individual reacts to their culture in different ways the culture and personality influence each other these insights were more systematically analyzed by later anthropologists like margaret mead and ruth benedict hence every culture is mainly because of psychological aspects historical connections and it is subjected to criticism how understand this he told he advocated culture relativism but sometimes he understand this by saying two cultures should not be compared to human beings should not be compared every culture is unique in its context every human being is unique in its context by listening it is so pleasant oh that person is unique in their context this person is unique in their context this culture is unique in their context that per that culture is unique in that that concept is called as culture relative but sometimes criticism is but sometimes culture relativism is detrimental dangerous how tell me kyo culture relativism means two cultures should not be compared because every culture is unique in their own context for example you cannot compare with me i cannot compare with you i am into the anthropology since 14 years so i might be good at anthropology you started now you might be good in some other things like tennis so two culture should not be compared two people should not be compared but sometimes it is detrimental how good more very good what is your name adi aditya ardika in this culture sati is there it is their culture let them continue in this culture dowry is there it is their culture let them continue so on the name of culture sometimes there might be some social evils superstitions so we should not tell that their culture their own their culture their own sometimes it will be detrimental to the human kind to the man kind there might be violation of human rights for example daudi bohra community of jammu and kashmir shia community they have the cultural it's a culture they have a cultural habit of going for female genital mutilation when the baby is 4 years 5 years very rudimentarily very roughly by using scissors unhygienic scissors they will be keeping the scissors in the genitals of the girl child of 4 years and 5 years and they will mutilate it after she become 18 years teenage girl she will be having uncontrollable menstrual cycles and she will not have regular periods she will be suffering with reproductive tract diseases so if i think that it is their culture it let them continue it is violation of in myanmar rakaina buddhists are killing rohingya muslims it is their culture let them continue it is their culture it is our culture no 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 every time the culture relativism would not be positive hence the culture relativism which is advocated by franz bose is also subjected to criticism too much emphasis on history historical historical connections psychological aspects environmental conditions he told the highest importance is given to what history but my criticism is if i want to adopt any culture first i want it need should be there in history we adopted english language why because at that time civil service examination was conducted only in english and speaking english was elite 
Brahmins also want to become, Brahmins themselves are elite, but still the Brahmins want to become more elite. Who are more elite? Britishers. So they emulated the lifestyle of British. How, sir? By learning this language. But he emphasized more on history. Means first there should be a need. Necessity should be there. Then only we will learn, no. Then only we will adopt. Without any necessity, if it is present in the history, we will take it, huh? no. If that is the case, so many superstitions we left today, whether we are following Sati, today whether we are following Sati, it is present in our history, then we should follow today. According to him, what is present in the history, it will become part of our culture. But we removed it, we eliminated it, we prohibited it, we are not accepting today, 100 percent. In villages also they are not accepting, in tribal societies also they are not accepting, in urban society also they are not, aspect, not allowing Sati. So, what is present in the history cannot be necessarily present in today's, history, today's culture. So, higher importance given to history was missed other major social aspects, didn't discuss about religion, didn't discuss about marriage, didn't discuss about family. These are the very, very important social aspects. He didn't discuss, just he told history, psychology, environment. Hence, the resultant is culture. Because of his initial efforts, he is regarded as father, guru, hero, philosopher for the discipline of American. These are the contributions of Franz Boas. Tell me, fata fata. Franz Boas contributions kya hai Folklore. Folklore, Janapada songs. Folklore. Second, language. He emphasized on protection of endangered languages, mainly tribal languages. Why? Because he believed that by protecting the language, we can also protect the culture. Next, physical anthropology. What he told, it is not always the hereditary which is responsible for human growth and development. The environment role is also there in human growth and true. Accepted or not? Next, historical particularism, he told that every culture is because of history, environment, psychology and higher, em higher emphasis was been given to history. Next, cultural relativism, what is cultural relativism? Every culture is unique in its context, two cultures should not be compared, that particular concept is called as cultural relativism. Next, diffusion, he introduced diffusion, people will not love to introduce or create, people will love to diffuse. Well, because diffusion is more convenient when compared to innovate. Next, anthropometric measurements. Anthropometric measurements means growth and development. These are the contributions of Franz Bose, and here we also understood about historical particulars. Ah, historical particularism means in history, particularly what is present, that will be present in us. But history particular, in that history, Sati is there, so it is present today. In history, dowry is there, so it is present today. In history, female genital mutilation is there, today is also present. Particularly what are present in the history that will be replicated in culture. This is about, any doubts? Historical or particular? So, we understood about historical particularism, Franz Bose school. So, first is classical evolutionism, second is historical particularism. Third school is functionalism. Very, very interesting. Compulsory every year one question will be there in the mains exam. Damn sure. The most important. I hope you got the PDFs. So, this functionalism is of two varieties. Functionalism is of two varieties. Listen. Functionalism is of two varieties. 
structural functionalism, cultural functionalism. What is this? First I will discuss about cultural functionalism. Then the next school is called a structural functionalism. Cultural functionalism is given by Brownslow Malnovsky. Brownslow Malnovsky. What he want to tell? He want to tell that for a man, human needs are most important. Man will give highest importance to human needs. Food, clothing, shelter, sex, etc. Which are undeniably uncompromisable. Undeniably uncompromisable. He want it in any cost. Why? Because he is a animal first. Because he is an animal first. Then later human being. What animal want? Animal want food, clothing, shelter and reproduction. So man give high according to Malnovsky. These all are those people's views. So human needs are very important. So, in order to satisfy the needs, man had created some systems. Man had created some environment. Man had created some systems, that system is called as culture. Like what? Reproduction is a need, yes. Reproduction is a need, sexual activity is a need. For the sexual activity, it should not be random. Why? Because it will create chaos this person looking at that woman, this, this person looking at that woman or that woman looking at this person, complete chaos, people will fight, unorganized behavior will result. So there is a need for organized satisfaction of human needs. So we created a culture called as marriage. If this person is looking at her other's wife, he will come and bid, you have your wife, no see your wife man. Then wife will come and bid, why are you, I am there, I am not good, why are you looking at that lady? means a organized behavior. So, culture is a system which is created for the satisfaction of needs of man. That is called as cultural functionalism. Here function is to purpose. So, culture is having a purpose. What is the purpose? Satisfaction of needs. So, hence it is functionalism or need, need theory or, or cultural functional theory, same. That is the main crux of this particular school. So, the main proponent or more main concept of cultural functionalism is every culture is having a function to satisfy the needs of man. Now you see. If this culture is not satisfying the needs of man, if this culture is not satisfying the needs of man, then that culture will deteriorate. For example, in America, the sexual satisfaction can happen outside the marriage relationship like dating or etc, etc, etc. So his needs are getting satisfied outside the bond of marriage. So, the importance given to the marriage is reducing. Marriage is what? Cultural element. So, the importance of marriage is reducing. Hence, that cultural element is not satisfying the needs of man. Hence, that importance of marriage is reducing in America. But today, today also, you have to accept it. 90% of Indians, their reproductive needs are satisfied only after their marriage. So, some needs are getting satisfied because of the cultural element, hence the cultural element is sacred and we are following it. If culture is satisfying the needs of man, that culture will evolve and flourish. If that cultural element is not satisfying the needs of man, then that cultural element will perish according to that is the crux. This we will do later. So, this is divided into two. Cultural functionalism or structural functionalism or cultural functionalism simply called as functionalism. At the beginning of 20th century, 1920, two British scholars forwarded a theory what is called as functional and structural approach to the analysis of culture. Malnovsky is associated with functional approach, whereas Radcliffe Brown is a pioneer of structural approach. The analysis of culture and society, though this theory is also referred as structural functional theory, means 
So, two theories are there. One is called a structural functional theory, other is called a func cultural functional theory. As I told you, culture is having the main responsibility of satisfaction of needs of man. Structural functionalism kya bolta hai ki? You are talking about individual needs. Structural functionalism will tell that there are some societal needs. When societal needs are satisfied, then the man will love to live in the society. For example, if society gives some guarantee to me, like what? Today we are happy in Indian society. Why? Because any old people, vulnerable sections, we are giving them pensions. Any physically handicapped person, we are giving them some things. Means they are part of the society. So, it is not only the individual needs, the society is also very important according to R.C. Brown. That school we will discuss in the next, after completion of cultural functionalism. So, in cultural functionalism, what we will understand? Every culture is having a function. What is that function? Satisfaction of needs of man. So, cultural functionalism or simply called as For the first time, functional approach in the analysis of culture in anthropology appeared in the writings of Malnovsky. First in his book, that book name is called as Scientific Theory of Culture and Other Essays and then in another book called as Dynamics of Culture. So, this school was been written in two books. One book is called as Scientific Theory of Culture and Other Essays. Second book is called as Dynamics of Culture Change. So, his concept he gave in these two books. He criticized early evolutionary approach, diffusionary approach because they never explained about the functions of various cultural institutions and cultural traits. See, Malnovsky told, why you people are worried about how the culture got evolved from savagery to barbarism to civilization? Why you people are borrowed? Why you people are worried? from where the culture got diffused. Most important thing is, how culture is useful to me? You only think about how culture is helpful, how culture is useful, how culture is helping. Why you are bothered about evolution of culture? Why you are bothered about diffusion of? Means for example, I am there, I am teaching the class. Why you are bothered about where I am from? Why you are bothered about my personal life? Where you are, why you are bothered about how this person came from? What are the aspects all about? And the most important thing is how I am helpful to you. So, we have to study culture, how it is helpful in satisfaction of the needs rather than how culture evolved from where the culture got diffused. What is the purpose of learning about it? Are you getting my point? So, the functions of the cultures is important, not the evolution of culture or diffusion of. So, he criticized the classical evolutionist, he criticized the diffusionist and he emphasized upon how much is important for the satisfaction of individual. He old opinion that it was useless to kill time in detailed explanation of cultures, need of the time was to examine, explain, analyze why and how culture functions and significant. First person to give functional explanation to understand the culture, according to him, institution of cultures operate to satisfy the needs of the individuals and that of a society as a whole. Malnovsky is of view that every aspect of culture as a function, they all are interdependent and interrelated. Every element of the culture is having a function. Every function, every culture trait, every culture trait, every culture trait, every culture trait have a function. Holistically, complete culture will satisfy my needs. For example, I will tell you. Marriage, they will fix one muhurt. 10, 15 pm, the marriage should happen. Means what? Mangal Sutra, he should tie at that particular point of time. It's a small one cultural trait. 
but you tell me in our families at that particular muhurt at that particular time if marriage doesn't happen whether we will be with some dissatisfaction or we will be with satisfaction we will be with dissatisfaction number one in future they are fighting like anything from next day they are fighting like anything then what the old people will tell in our family you know they are fighting because the marriage didn't happen in means what it can be an individual culture trait that individual culture trait will have a function to perform so individual 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 culture trait will have the function to perform hold together it satisfy all the needs of the man it can be a biological need initially and next emotional need psychological needs later so overall all the needs of the man is satisfied by whom by the culture and each and every cultural trait muhurt or for example priest when we are doing one puja in the one temple for example he is asking for one specific type of flowers we didn't brought that specific type of flowers priest told to you a hey, what man i told you to bring this particular flowers you didn't brought whether some disturbance we will feel or not after the completion of ritual also we will continue with the disturbance or not means what it can be a small cultural trait each and every cultural trait will have a function to perform each and every cultural trait is interrelated to other so in the culture whole in the cultural whole culture individual individual traits culture trait 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 this will have a function to perform 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 this will have function to perform and all together also each is interrelated with other each is interrelated with other each is interrelated with one aspect is underperforming if one aspect is not performed properly whether we will be satisfied so he want to tell that every culture trait have a function to perform and each and every culture trait in the culture is interrelated to and hold together this all combination will result in the satisfaction of needs of individual and when i am satisfied you are satisfied you are satisfied you are satisfied when all the individuals are satisfied it doesn't mean that society is satisfied when the society is satisfied tell me whether that society is a peaceful society a functional unity among culture can be seen in maintaining the existence of human beings on the earth the culture fulfills the needs of man through cultural institution malnobiski opines that man has different kinds of needs such as social need friendship economical needs food religious need some super power is controlling me religious needs physical needs mental needs so this all starts with this first starts with this if you remember abraham maslow's need theory first starts with physical needs then social needs then economical needs then religious needs then my psychological needs so hence these all needs are satisfied by what by culture if that culture is not going to satisfy my needs that culture will deteriorate i will adopt another in order to satisfy these needs man has developed material and non material aspects of culture the purpose of inventing language literature art technology etc is for satisfaction of means the primacy is what the primacy is what what is the most important element according to malnovsky's functionalism satisfaction of human needs the satisfaction of needs is the main purpose of this robin hood is malnovsky this is trobri and islands trobri and islands great thing about this gentleman the great thing about this gentleman is being from the family of lords of british 
a rich influential person in the process of studying about the tribal communities he went to malinesia polynesia trobriand islands milu islands if you remember australia northeast new zealand northeast there is a pacific ocean small small islands will be there fiji vanuatu tuvalu small small islands so there he went and stayed for 3 years at a stretch and he been like one among them dressed like one among them learn la local language understood their histories and written about them he is a perfect example of participant observant or participation observation so what are the salient features of functional so up to now what we studied means this is introduction only what we understood means the main purpose of the function is satisfaction of needs of individual each and every trait of the culture is having the function to perform that combination of culture traits is complete culture every culture trait have a satisfaction of individual needs all the combination also results in satisfaction of complete needs of man so when individual needs are satisfied societal needs are satisfied hence that culture will evolve flourish if that culture is not performing that cultural trait will perish salient features of functionalism number 1 you know that culture is the means for the satisfaction of each culture trait has some specific function to what is the means culture is the means for the satisfaction of number 2 e the culture traits are interdependent and operates in totality with relation to each other in relation to each other i told you individual 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 culture trait culture trait culture trait combined to form a complete they are interdependent interrelated you tell me just see why i am taking the example of marriage because you will you, you will connect whether we do marriage in isolation or marriage religion family relatives kinship in combined we will do it's a combination so each and every culture trait will have a function to perform and each and every culture trait is interrelated with another culture a culture trait cease to exist if it is not going to satisfy the is not going to satisfy its a culture trait cease to exist if it is not performing its what is the function satisfaction of sati once upon a time culture very severe culture very serious culture but now it is futile why because it is not performing any function whether sati got decomposed degenerated function is contribution of partial activity to total activity of which it is a part see each and every culture trait have its part have its part have its part 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 combination is total activity so every culture trait is a partial activity to total activity yes or no every unit is important 12 units of paper 1 9 units of paper 2 to 12 plus 9 21 units so every unit is important or not every unit is doing its partial activity when this partial activity combined will become total activity these are the salient features of functionalism what are the salient features of functionalism number 1 every culture trait have a function to perform number 1 number 2 is culture traits are interrelated and interrelated and and in interaction 
Third, if that culture trait, the culture trait ceases to exist if it is not performing its function. Fourth, function is a partial activity through the total activity. These are the salient provisions of functionalism. So, now I am going to introduction completed. Now, I am going to the contributions. Contributions. First contribution, field work. As I told you, he is the first person who emphasized on participant observation. He not only emphasized, he himself did participant observation. He stayed there for three years, being from the family of lords. His concept of culture, his theory of functionalism, his theory of needs, his theory of law, his contribution to kinship studies, his contribution to magic, religion, myth, art and science, his contribution to social strain, his contribution to economic law. How many contributions are there? Nine contributions. One by one, one by one I will tell you. First I will tell you crux, then I will go into detail. Malnovsky's contribution to field work. Malnovsky's contribution to field work. See, first one. He was the first person who told for every anthropologist, if you want to study about any tribal community, you have to do field work. And what type of field work? Participant observation type of field work. Means what? Anthropologists should become one among them and study about them. Then the people will come with their original culture, original data. If you want to really study about them, you have to study about them in their environment from their point of view that is called as original data and that ethnography is called as original ethnography. That can happen only if you do participant observation. Participant observation means what? Long stay, learning local language and learning the local history from their perspective by being with them as one among them. That particular approach is called as participant. First one. Second one. Is concept of culture, if you remember. E. B. Taylor told culture is a combination of art, morals, everything. What is that word? Culture is acquired. Culture is acquired by member as a member of the society. Acquired. But this person is telling that culture is all those things, but inherited from the society, not from the parents. Who gave me culture? Society gave me the culture. So, people will learn from the society that he named, that he termed it as what? Inherited. Culture will be inherited, but not biological inheritance, but social inheritance. So, I will be getting the culture inherited from my society. Second, third, theory of functions. Every culture have a function to perform. If that culture is not performing its function, that will. And every function is what? Satisfaction of needs. Theory of law. Two types of laws are there, civil law and criminal law. In that way, we will be going. First is on field work. What? Participant observation. Participant observation. Malnovsky revolutionized field works by introducing participant observation. He did field work at New Guinea. Milo Islands, Trobrian Islands. He is the first person who stayed there for three years to study the Trobrian diet. He lived the native and with native experience directly understood the demands and comforts of their culture. In the study of Trobrian Islands, he used static documentation with concrete evidence. Static documentation with concrete evidence. What is the concrete evidence? He himself was present. He himself is collecting the data. So, he made a static documentation with concrete evidence. How? By doing participant observation. First contribution. Second contribution kya hai? On culture comprises inherited artifacts, goods, technical process, ideas, habits and values. He also included social structure in analysis of culture because he was opinion that this could not be done except as a part of simple. So, he told that 
culture is a combination of artifacts goods technical process ideas habits and values which are given by whom by the society so if i am in indian society it got inherited from the society if he is from pakistan he got the culture inherited from pakistan society so it will give according to malnovsky the society will give to the individual where i am living there the society will give him the so he emphasized on what inheritance whereas kal eb teller emphasized on what acquired people will learn it might be from anywhere but malnovsky will tell that first we will give where our birth happened that society will give you initially you will take later on you might reject but initially if you are from a fam fam from a family in my family for example for example in daudi bohra a new born baby is a boy 15 years he he grown up and he became 15 years 16 years from childhood he is seeing female genital mutilation he grown up 20 years whether he will accept female genital mutilation or not he will accept why because from childhood he is seeing no from childhood he is seeing he is in the village He is, he is not educated. He is in the same village, and everyone are practicing female genital mutilation. After twenty years, also he will he will follow it. Means the culture will be given by the society. Later on, I might acquire it. I may not acquire it. But first, the culture will be. He emphasized on. For example, I will tell you. See. <coughs> 2011 horrific delhi rape case nirbhaya when the four people were been in an interview in tihar jail when they are asked why because it is not an act of sexual assault it is not a sexual assault what is sexual assault because of sexual attraction if we do the sexual if we do that activity it is called a sexual assault but it was not a sexual assault why they not only raped her they kept their hands they removed the genitals and they thrown on the country side this is what happened in the delhi 2011 it's a horrific horrendous activity then they were been interviewed then four people three people told the same fourth but juvenile three people told the same thing why you are after studying this interview or ask after studying this i came to know that you people not only sexual assaulted her you behaved very horrifically why you removed their her genitals you not only raped her you killed her what made you to kill her after your sexual satisfaction after your sexual satisfaction what is the need to kill her then they answered that he answered it's there in the interview in the youtube also we come from bihar in our area woman should not share show us face her face she should not roam with other boy other than the husband or brother or father but this lady at 11 o'clock climbed the bus and we were sitting in the back side of the seat and she not only came with the boy with skirt off dress but she is making lot of fun the both are falling on each other then i called her for moral policy then she told me that who are you is none of your business which angered me i told her what is this behavior this is not the behavior of behaving like an indian woman she this is my life who are you she used bad words also according to that person then we raped her when she, we were raping her she was been not at all convenient or not at all she was rejecting like anything so we thought that we have to give her a lesson we have to show her a lesson in order to show her a lesson teach her a lesson we did this horrific thing of removing her genital and throwing outside means what we understood why that person why those people behave like that those people believed that women should live like this other than that if she lives in any other way it is unacceptable to them why because their culture gave to them the society is taught to them that village culture taught to them that woman is made for this she should be like this other than this it is not acceptable to them 
hence there is sexual assault hence there is death of that lady means what culture is inherited from the society so culture society will give we also we also we be in our minds we will have patriarchal system why our society gave one egg is there son and daughter is there that one egg goes to whom one egg is there son and daughter is there so that egg parents will give to whom to son why that behavior that behavior is because of the culture patriarchal system gave it to the individual so what malnovsky told correct only up to some extent initially the culture will be given by the society but later on we will be also acquiring from other people like english language we acquired from other parts so up to some extent yes what he told is society will have the culture no for satisfaction of needs they themselves will create a culture society will have the culture for the satisfaction of individual needs so the same culture they will give it to the next generation inherited but later on as the time goes on as time goes on when he got educated he he tries to learn from others he acquires from others so first it is inheritance next it is acquired ebit other definition culture is that complex whole which includes knowledge belief art law moral customs which are both are contrary so eb dealers wish is what culture is acquired whereas this person's is what culture is inherited theory of functionalism the theory of functionalism he written in the book called as organoids of western pacific he gave three different types of functionalism one is called as integrationism other is called as dualistic form of functionalism other is called as monistic form of functionalism first <clears throat> all the rights of culture are interrelated if any change in any element necessarily change all the cultures are interrelated every culture trait will satisfy the needs of man every 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 will satisfy the all the needs of the man each and every culture trait is interrelated to another culture but he told in integrationism if one culture trait changes other culture trait other culture trait other culture trait other culture trait other culture trait, everything will change so in that way every culture trait is interrelated to another culture trait hence it's an integration of culture one small change if it happens then it creates a big change for example i will tell you once upon a time woman was not allowed to work slowly 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 what happened woman started to work now what happened the system woman means i am talking mainly about daughter in law now what happened your daughter in law is working what do you mean you are making your daughter in law to work you are making your wife to work mard nahi ho kya that change happened what your daughter in law is not working she will go and work somewhere now why you are making her to sit now it change a small change that now a woman can also work that change made her self independent financial independence when she is financial independent she is getting confidence that i can live by my own i no need any i no no not requirement of any other person no support so a small change is having a drastic change and a complete change that means from this he is telling that each and every culture trait is integra integrated interrelated hence that is called as integration integrationism ah no no here integration means together as a whole as a whole also we will use ism dualistic form of functions one more thing every culture to every culture to persist every culture to move on two things will be there in every culture one is called as myth other is called as folklore i am talking about primitive societies tribal societies not today's societies 
folklore janapadas you tell me if you if you if you know about typical village in some festivals compulsory in the temples or on the chaurastas they will conduct one janapadas they will conduct one folklore where all the villagers will come and sit it will motivate the people oh this is our culture this is our freedom movement this is our village god and they remotivate they get remotivated again they will become serious with respect to their culture who is pumping that energy folklore number 2 you are celebrating one festival every year compulsory you will celebrate this festival from your family but now you are in delhi your father somewhere in mumbai celebrate parents are somewhere in mumbai your family in mumbai celebrating the festival they called you repeatedly you have to come beta you have to come every year every year we will celebrate we will celebrate we have to come you are not listening then they will create a story you know what happened like this one like same like you our neighbors son went to delhi to prepare i told him he, they told him please come please come he also told that i will not come that year prelims he didn't clear they created a myth so what will it's a false belief but what it will create okay okay you don't you don't you don't tell all these negative things i will come in our villages also when we are celebrating any festival if you don't attempt or if you don't go or or there will be a specific way of doing rituals a specific way of doing the festivals if you don't do in that way there will be some story will be associated to it so that again we will come in the right path so it is not only the folklore there is also myths which will make the culture to be followed so every culture is also followed because of dual things one is called as folklore other is called as third monistic form of functionalism each individual culture trait has a function to each and every culture trait is important or not each each and every culture trait has a function to perform hence the theory of functionalism can be understood from three perspectives one is called as integrationism dualistic form and monistic all the culture traits are interrelated integrationism in the two things are very very important folklore and it's according to novisky monistic form every culture trait have a function to perform theory of in the book called us this you have to understand this you have to remember ah yes he studied very good in the organs of western pacific he noticed this yes ah no 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 in organs is one of the tribal community here he was studying then he understood this integrationism there he understood dualistic there he also understood importance of each and every cultural trait hence he gave a theory called as theory of function different for this one for this contribution malnovsky theory of needs he told he gave three types of needs basic needs derived needs integrational needs what is basic need means for every need there is a cultural institution first i first i will first i will bother about what my basic needs first i will bother about my basic needs what are my basic needs reproduction body comfort growth metabolism means what reproduction sexual activity body comfort shelter growth means food metabolism my existence these all are my basic needs so for reproduction marriage for body comfort clothing for growth food for metabolism is continued growth economic subsistence theory of needs is given by malnovsky in his paper called as scientific culture he defined need very important you can write in your philosophical essays you know the beauty of anthropology is it is not just limited to anthropology you can write examples in ethics you can write anthropological evolution in your philosophical essays see there is a definition of need compulsory one philosophical essay will be on need why because everything is need based you know need a system of conditions in biological organism a system of conditions in biological organism derived from cultural settings and natural settings 
these are the aspects that are necessary for the survival of individuals in the see from a biological setting one need is coming a biological need is coming up and that need is which type of need will be determined by whom by cultural setting and natural setting see understand this i am hungry for example i am hungry i am a jewish i have a need i am i am i have a need i want food to be eat i want food to eat but you gave me pork you gave me pork my need is not that anything can be given my need is also derived from what my cultural setting and national setting so if you give pork i will reject it why because my birth happened in jewish community in jewish community eating pork is unacceptable i am a muslim person i am very much hungry you give me pork i will beat you like anything how much ever my need is there but it doesn't mean that i will eat whatever i want so need he told a system of condition of a biological organism derived from cultural setting and natural setting so that need which is coming out yes i am hungry but i am hungry but i will not eat pork i am hungry but i will not eat beef are getting my point so in that way he gave three types of first one is called as basic need other one is called as derived need other one is called as integration need for basic need there is a cultural institution similarly for derived needs demand for goods and its consumption economics came into existence regulation of human behavior social control mechanism came into existence renewal of institution by increasing the knowledge education came into existence authority to control the institutions political organizations came the derived needs are related to requirement of maintaining cultural responses through recognition of human behavior means first thing is my needs second is what when my needs are satisfied next my behavior should be controlled so second thing is controlling of human behavior through that controlling of behavior, human behavior needs is called as derived needs integrational needs traditions biggest need religion is the biggest need which is called as integrational needs people will attract to each other for what for religion for race for art for music that integrates people people want integration it the last type of need is what integrationalism when my biological needs are satisfied basic needs when my de derived needs are satisfied the last need is what integration malnovsky's theory of law he gave law theory of law understand this see there are two types of laws generally two types of laws are there civil law and criminal law <coughs> when i use the word complex societies it is about modern societies if i use about simple societies it is called as tribal societies again i am repeating when i use the term complex societies i am talking about modern societies if i am using simple societies i am talking about tribal societies two laws are there in complex societies one is civil law criminal law same two laws are there in simple societies also complex civil law and criminal law but you know better than me what constitute civil law what constitute criminal law you tell me what constitute civil law property issues marital issues land issues this all comes under civil law criminal law what will come under complex society injury death this all comes under now you see but malnovsky studied in trobri and elens civil law is different and criminal law is different from mainstream society for example if someone come for example if someone come and took my property it will my property someone came and took my kabja someone came and took my property whether it comes under civil law or criminal law in today's society 
civil law. But in the simple societies, if someone come and took the land, it is called as criminal law because it will be individual property or a public property or it is a property of the community or the property of the individual. In tribal societies, I told you in the beginning, the property will be on the name of community, Gond land, Baiga land, Chenchu land, Toda land. So, the land issues in complex societies will be under civil cases, but the land issues in complex, in simple societies will be under criminal cases. Now, you see here, so there are two laws, one is civil law and criminal law. First, civil law is a set of rules regulating the social mechanism and starter in normal chaos, normally. Civil law is a class of binding rules which mostly controls personal relations between the kings and also maintains economic relations and the family issues. Criminal law is a safety arrangement putting things right. Whenever there is a hitch in the normal cause, then it will be called as criminal case. In simple societies, according to Malnovsky, criminal law is a fundamental rule safeguarding the law of life. Anyhow, law of life is criminal only. But Law of property is also a law of culture is also a I go into a temple wearing chappal. Example, people will beat me, they will send me away, police will come me, come near me, and they will do moral policing on me, moral policing on me, and they will leave me, or more, they will take me to the police station, they will just Warn me and they will send. Why? Because it is a civil offence. If anyone is not following the culture in the, sim the complex society, it is called as civil case. But if I do not follow the culture in simple societies, it is a criminal. If I do not accept the properties of the simple society, it is a criminal. Means understand the differences. What constitute civil offence? What constitute criminal offence? What constitute civil law? What constitute criminal law? So, there is lot of difference which is been understood by Malnovsky. The law of life obviously correct, but law of property and law of culture is also criminal. But law of property and law of culture in mainstream society is law of culture and law of property is what in mainstream society? civil law. So, he gave the differences. In simple societies also two laws are present, but what constitute the civil, what constitute the criminal are different, yes or no? Two sets of ah, the judgment means there will be political systems. For example, in Gond there will be Mahato, one person will be big man, he will give the judgment. But how it is organized was been told by Malnovsky. Civil and criminal. What are civil in simple societies? Those are not the civil in simple society. What are criminal in simple? Those are not the criminal in complex societies. The distinction was been given by Malnovsky. How? No, no, they do not have political organization. See, <clears throat> we evolved from them, they are not different. There is a big man. In earlier, there is a one person will be there who will be the head of the in the original times, it is called as band level political organization. Means when they are going for hunting, who is having experience, who already had a very successful expedition, he will become the leader. That one band will be there. For that band, he will be the leader. So, that is called as band level political organization. Then the band, band, band slowly become tribe. A tribe level organization that a big man will be there or five people will be there. Then came kingdom chiefdom, one person is ruling. Then came state level political organization. So, this person studied about the tribal societies who are present in Melanesian Islands and Polynesian Islands in the Pacific Ocean and he understood what constitutes civil law and what constitutes criminal law. And he understood that the criminal laws which are criminal laws in complex societies are not the criminal laws in simple societies, one constitute the civil laws in simple societies are not the civil laws in complex. So, that distinction he gave. So, he told that for example, the law of property and law of culture is generally 
a civil but in simple society it is what criminal because of their technology backwardness see for example they don't follow democracy today also democracy is advanced no political organization means the name broad name it is not democracy if that political organization is democracy then i will tell them civilized they have a political organization but with a big man having a big man as a head of political organization is primitive only no if that political organization is ruled by democracy then it is called as civilized it is primitive only we can see in political organization point of view we can tell them are primitive but primitive constitute not only political organization their technology their economy their way of living their culture their political organization if all this constitute we will call it as primitive for example saddam hussein was there in iraq he is a king but he he ruled very superb his administration was awesome iraq was flourishing like anything when saddam hussein was the monarch in iraq it was the jealous of the america who waged war on iraq on the name called as weapons of mass destruction if not iraq was very very happy people were been very very happy but he is also king you know so it is one of the aspect but all aspects combinedly together if they are present then it is called as primitive society that is present with tribal people Malnovsky's contribution to kinship studies. Understand this. First contribution is what? Field work. Second one. Second one. Ah. Huh? Definition of culture. Third one. Fourth one. Theory of needs, basic needs. Fifth one. Theory of law. Sixth one. Hmm. See. <clears throat> so what? Up to now we came to a conclusion. So Malnovsky is telling that everything is functionalist point of view. Everything is purpose point of view. Everything is utility point of view. So he told that kinships are also utility point of view. It might be the simple view of Malnovsky. It might be the simple societies they will maintain with only those people kinship relations with whom they have the utility. For example, you have one relative. You are in need of just thousand rupees. Example, you are just need of thousand rupees. You called him. He is of your age, cousin. He had money. You know that. He know that you are in dire need. That also he know. You asked him. He denied. One time he denied. Second time he denied. Third time he denied. Fourth time also he didn't give. Now you see whether your kinship bond will continue. Or your kinship bond will deteriorate. Deteriorate. Your kinship relative every time making fun of you. Your kinship relative every time making you low in front of all. Repeatedly he is doing. Whether the kinship bond will be there or it will be deteriorate. So he is telling that it might be the kinships also. It will be utility point of view. And he told that every kinship relationship is a kinship algebra. Kinship, algebra means mathematics, calculative. With whom I have like mind, with whom my social needs, my political needs, my economic needs are satisfied. Who is helping me, or where we are, both are in very good relationship, that will become part of my kinship relationship. But not all my kinship relatives. Hence, kinship bonding also he discussed on the point of utility. Hence, that utility point of view he named it as what algebra, calculation. 
people will know, whether all your relatives are your friends only few people will be there in that with only few people we will be maintaining good relationship so kinship is also utility point of view kinship is also functional point of view hence he named it as the same thing he noticed in tribal societies as well <clears throat> malnovsky's views on magic religion myth art science religion is called as opium of masses according to karl marx religion is called as opium of masses why it will integrate the people it will bring the people together it will strengthen the people's relationship so what is integrating the people these things art religion myths science magic means beliefs here magic means what some beliefs so what are the integrative forces for any community religion what is the integrative force for any community art forms what is integrative force for any community some belief systems it will combine together if two brothers are fighting what the parents will do they will organize some puja they will organize some ritual so two brothers will come they will sit together compulsory they will come why because it's a religion when they come the mother tries to combine together mother tries to meet them together mother's time to lessen their conflict why because it's a integrative Malnovsky propounded functional approach to the study of magic, religion, myth, art, and science. He opined that these are highest and the most derived imperative of human culture. He believes that these are integrative in nature and responsible for existence of individual man and why? Because I and you will be connected. What? Why we will be connected? There are some things like religion, art, beliefs, which combines the people together. so these are called as integrative systems according to malnovsky's views on study of social change very beautiful this is social change change is the imperative of nature change is imperative of the nature any system is subjected to change social system is not an excuse everything will change how it will change sir everything will change change is imperative change is inevitable change is required for the nature change itself is nature so he is telling that every society will change so there is a process of social change there is a process of social change how as the needs changes social change happens once upon a time when only husband is working that income was sufficient for the family now what happened needs increased so income increase income income need is to be increased means income should be increased needs increased fees was 500 rupees earlier when i was studying now it is 1 lakh school children fees second class third class fourth class fifth class fees is 1 lakh rupees when i am studying if my father used to pay 100 rupees it was sufficient my mother no need to work so my mother didn't studied mother didn't do any job why because the needs were limited as time goes on needs increased or needs changed when the needs changed needs increased demand increased the demand want more income when more income is there father income is insufficient now who should work mother should work so up to now mother was not allowed to the workplace now mother is motivated to go for workplace why it happened means mother is going to workplace she is becoming financial independence when she is becoming financial independence why she will accept patriarchal system if husband tells hey keep quiet means you keep quiet i am working i am also contributing to the family's growth why i should keep quiet so slowly 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 patriarchal system is getting deteriorated why the patriarchal system got deteriorated because the need changed so social change happened 
once upon a time it can be engagement or a marriage compulsory boy and girl should physically present but nowadays what happened we have social media we have online platforms we have skype etc etc so for engagement at least for marriage they might come but lot of engagements are happening on online need change why because his presence is required there at the same time engagement should happen so i am coming up with a new format called as online once upon a time the marriage has to be happened only by elders now there are lot of platforms why because the need change as well as the social change according to malnovsky new needs are responsible for evolution of new culture as a function eventually with new cultural change there is change in culture which leads to social change in the he also opined that social change is because of modern factors like industrialization globalization and means any social change is mainly because of change in the need agar need change hota hai to compulsory social system also will change once upon a time enculturation of the children was the responsibility of the elder parents now what happened now we are we want more income so husband is going to other place to work with him the wife and with him the children went but we are not taking the elders why because there i got kindergarten so my need changed i created a social system there i cannot take them why because expenses are more but little amount who can enculturate there a kindergarten a social system called as kindergarten means enculturation was the responsibility of the grandparents now the same enculturation is created by kindergarten so the need change so social change so for any social change the needs are responsible according to see i will tell you <clears throat> i am a tribe i am living in the forest mining company people came they removed me but i should I, i i want to eat food my family want to survive they took my land up to now i don't want to leave my land but now i am forced to leave my land up to now i don't want to go and live with the mainstream but i am forced to live with mainstream need came so social change need is what my survival need is what up to now i my needs used to be satisfied from the forest but now whatever it may be wherever it may be first my needs should be satisfied as the needs are changing needs format is changing my social changes also this is about <clears throat> the next big thing is economic anthropology malnovsky's contribution on malnovsky's contribution on economic anthropology so listen carefully <laughs> like a story i will tell try to understand this he gave a economic concept called as substantivist economic approach which is also called as substantivism iska matlab ye hua ki substantivist economy means i will not give importance to demand and supply i will not give importance to profit making i will not give importance to utilitarianism i will give importance to human relations i will give importance to kinship relations i will give importance to my people my tribal people so giving importance to human relations giving importance to culture giving importance to kinship bond not giving importance to demand and supply not giving importance to market principle not giving importance to utilitarianism not giving importance to profit maximization is called as substantivist economy or substantivist approach this person gave a new concept called as substantivist economy people are not bothered about money making people are not bothered about demand and supply people are not bothered about goods and services people are not bothered about profit maximization but people are bothered about what 
ह्यूमन कल्चर ह्यूमन रिलेशन कीनशिप रिलेशन बॉन्ड ट्रेडिशन वैल्यूज बिलीव कस्टम्स एक्सेट्रा so that particular type of economy is called as substantivist economy whereas the economy which is bothered about demand and supply utilitarianism market principles is called as formalism and he gave the concept called as substantivist economy for that he studied when he was in trobriand islands he noticed one unique system called as pularing he found a unique system called as pularing what is this i will tell you see here pularing ferocious pacific ocean this is island small 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 islands they have a habit called a ceremonial exchange they have a habit of ceremonial exchange what is that habit what is that they will have two things mawali saulaba mawali saulaba what is mawali what is saulaba if you see here if you see here mawali arm bands saulaba necklace what they believe in the ferocious ocean 18 tribal communities will follow this pularing nearly 17000 tribal people are part of this pularing every year on auspicious month they will do this pularing as a ceremonial exchange what is that i will have some arm bands i will have some necklace of no value arm band is made up of shells the saulavas are made up of shells necklaces are made up of shells which are easily available on the beaches what they do they will take from one tribal community to another tribal community one tribal community to another tribal community wakuta fergusen trobriand kitwa marshall bennett dobu cube cube warl Mismi, Woodlar, Laughlin, one-one tribal community. They will be moving. How they will move? Saulva, Saulva, clockwise direction. Mawali, anti-clockwise direction. So, Saulva means what? Necklace. They will carry the necklace here. and they will give it to them they will carry the necklace another necklace they will give it to them they will carry the necklace they will give it to them from this side mawali arm bands they will give the arm bands to them they will give the arm bands to them they will give the arm bands to them if any person is coming with arm band if any person is coming up with any mawali they will feel very happy oh my people are coming it is of no value it is of no economic value but it is establishing what human relations for example in our society raksha bandhan time the sister will bring rakhi rakhi itself is doesn't have any value 5 rupees also we will get a rakhi 1 rupee also we will get a rakhi but we will feel very happy my sister came from that much far just to tie the rakhi so human relations will born similarly between the tribal communities exchange will be happening in anti clock clockwise direction and in anti clockwise direction they will be bringing the necklace of no economic value but saulava and they will be bringing arm bands in anti clockwise direction oh you you gave mawali this saulava again they will go they will give saulava again they will get mawali again they will give so there will be exchange of gifts there will be exchange of gifts but when we calculate this saulava and mawali there is of no economic value but it is establishing what human relations why it is establishing human relations ferocious ocean 
on small these are not boats these are canoes small boats they travel thousands of kilometers just to give mawali means it is not the economic value which is important it is a social value which is important you risked your life and you came near me so the bond between the tribal communities became more stronger because of this kularing which they are practicing in centuries which are practicing in the 21st century in 2023 also which is there today which is studied by malinovsky it to create wonder among the malinovsky what the people just to transfer or give the mawali and saulva they are they are traveling through this ferocious ocean and the people are so happy you came with mawali you came with saulva why because one will be coming in clockwise direction another will be coming in anti clockwise direction i will not sit i will also carry so every year it is happening i will be with some expectations yes or no rocky time we will be some expectation my sister will come my sister will come my sister will come if she came human relations will become stronger why because she reached my expectations so human relations become stronger this because of this kula ring the 17 tribal communities became the 18 tribal communities became stronger and they fought against the colonial masters british and they got independence zones so when they got interacted they got interacted because of this kularing in the exchange of savulava and mawali they got interacted and they understood that we ourselves are so much unity why we have to listen to this colonial master and they fought against the british and they became they got independent a special season will be there like a festival ceremonial exchange like how we will have rakhi festival a ceremony but we will remember for one year no so it generates people's confidence social relations will be established unity among the 18 tribal communities were been united because of laring but why we are studying why we are studying because the saulava and mawali is of no economic value the saulava and mawali of no economic value it really it, if we sell it for 10 rupees also no one is ready to buy it but it is creating what men relation no no see i have amband and sablava i will come and i will give you it will go exchange it will be exchanging exchanging not one multiple will be there ah yes he will he will be exchanging he will be exchanging he will exchange 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 so giving itself is a very big thing for me. why that much saulava and mawali they believe it is an auspicious thing religious thing it is of no economic value but that is one particular exchange a ceremonial good so it has become more auspicious rakhi is a ceremonial good ask we can tie anything but why we will write tie only rakhi how much it happened friendship band are not that much popular as rakhi band friendship bands came very 15 years 10 years back but their friendship band didn't became that much popular as popular as kularing kula trading partnerships are lifelong affairs and their details are fixed by traditions it is fixed by traditions why it is important they travel this much nowadays why human relations are becoming weak you know nowadays sisters are taking the rakhi and they are taking a photograph and they are sending through whatsapp and what our boys are doing taking 500 rupees note taking photo and they are sending back but these people traveling so that's the grave gravity the sincerity they are keeping their life on risk so the relations are becoming more strong kularing in this way the exchange will be happening malnovsky argued that kularing served a major function in trobriand society that is it serves to establish friendly relations among the inhabitants of different highlands and maintain a pattern of peaceful contact and communication over great distance with trading partners who might or might not speak the because of kularing they united together and fought against colonialism of british in the
No, he is moving, no. He is an anthropologist, he is moving. For three years, see, he is a, he is a a modern man, he is a complex man. Here, for example, in Delhi, we will see people with different languages will come. So he know, he can, he will understand. There will be, inf very good question, I got your question. There will be informants. For every tribal community, he will recruit one informant. So, that informant will be helping in translation. This is another problem. Informant sometimes will not give the original data. <coughs> so, data collected will not be original, the data collected will be biased because of informant. <coughs> Next system is VASI system. What is this VASI system? Understand. VASI system. Or this is Vasi system. See, among the Trobrian Islands, among the Trobrian Islands, people who are living on the coast, people who are living inside the island they have an understanding, what is that? The people who are living hinterland, in the inland area, hinterland area, they will not go for fishing. The people who are living on the coast, they will not go for cultivation. So, people living on the coast, they will go for fishing. And the people who are living in the hinterland, they will go for cultivation. So, there is a social relations. What is that? I will give you food. I will give you food grains. You give me fish. Whether they cannot go for fishing, whether they cannot do cultivation, a social relation, a social bond, a understanding, a understanding of human relation. That you do this, I will do this. So, because of this, from generations together, the Trobriand islanders are living on peace, mainly the people who are in the hinterland and the people who are living on the coast. Why? Because there is a social arrangement that you do cultivation, I will do fishing and it is fixed. Whether he cannot go for fishing, whether he cannot go for cultivation, he can go. But still it is fixed because of a social relation. That particular system is called as Vasi system. It is a similar system of Kula exchange. It is exchange between fixed families. It takes place between the coastal inhabitants and inland. The coastal people are barred from cultivating food cereals and Indian people are barred from taking up fishing. Hence, there is exchange of fish from coastal and food crops from Urigubu system. See, understand this, they are tribal people, they believe in culture, they fear of culture, they fear of traditions because there will be myths. So, the conflicts will be less, they will be, there will be no rebels like us. They will follow it blindly, why? Because they have a myth. In our society, we do not have myths, so we become rebels, our questions will come. But there, the fear of the myths. The fear of traditions, the fear of culture, they try to protect their culture. This is their culture. This is their culture. Urigubbu system. What is Urigubbu system? Urigubbu system. I am there. I am there. I will give how much food I produce to my sister's husband. It is an Urugubbu system, a social relation. He will have his sister. In his production, he will give his 50 percent of production to his sister. So, in that way, the social relations are there. Understand this. It is not about money. It is about the guarantee which is given by the brother to the sister. In the Urugubbu system, the brother is giving his half of the amount to his sister's husband. So, sister's husband and he is in a very good relationship. His sister is safe in his house and he is doing to his sister, he is doing to his sister. He is, so, everyone are in a social relation. That particular system he noticed in 
Mailu Islands called as Urigubbu system. Urigubbu literally means maintenance, its system of tribute in the Trobri and Islands in Papua New Guinea. It is a practical between brothers in a man is obligated by tradition to give some of the food he grows to his sister's husband. A man who is married and has a married sister will give a percentage of his garden's produce to his sister's husband and receive produce from his wife's brother. Like this. Married men having married sisters give to sister's husband. A social. Nowadays, we will question why you can earn no. Then the human relations will. Blurred. But there the human relations are serious. Why? Because it is their culture. Urigubbu system. So, he explained economic anthropology to, through three case studies. One case study is Kularing. Second is Vasi. Third is, tell me about Kularing. Tell me about Kularing. Ah, Saulava and Mawali. Saulava means necklace, Mawali means armbands. So, it will be exchanged in clockwise and anticlockwise direction among the tribal communities who are located in the Pacific Ocean. It is their culture practice, a social practice which is followed since generation. Every year on a ceremony, on a monthly ceremony, as a monthly event they will be doing on an auspicious month. So, that has enhanced the social relationship among them. This had united the 18 tribal communities, nearly 17,000 people and this is continuing as a tradition. Hence, they united together and fought against Ah, see, he went, he started studying about them, not initially, for three years. Initially, see, I come, initially you might be rejecting, I stayed there, I stayed there, I stayed there. After three years, he did participant observation for how many years? Three years. That is the reason long stay, local language, local history is very important. Not as if a stay is only one week, if a stay is only four weeks, no one will accept. No, he is staying there, he is staying there. Three years is a long time. So, long time so they accepted. So, he understood, he felt interesting. That is the example of participant. He concluded the need based culture has four laws. Understand this. So, so any law will be of four things. Number one, law of culture determinism. Tell me. Our law is coming out from our culture or not? Our law is coming out from our culture. Culture will determine our law. For example, I will tell you. For the first time, joint sitting of the parliament happened for the very first time to pass one bill. Which bill? Joint sitting of our parliament happened. Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha for the first time happened for one bill which is called as Dowry Prohibition Act. You know, Lok Sabha people accepted but Rajya Sabha people did not accept it. What man you want to prohibit Dowry? Without Dowry marriage will happen. What you are thinking? Our Rajya Sabha people told. Why? Means till that time, till 1961, Dowry taking, Dowry giving was a law. Why? Because Dowry is our then in 1961, because of radical change which happened in the society, we banned, we prohibited dowry. But till 1961, why? That law is coming from the culture. Number one. Number two, law of native conduct. For example, I will tell you. Live-in relationship. Live-in relationship is accepted by the Supreme Court. But there is no societal acceptance. That is the reason we didn't make any law for living relationship. Supreme Court told on the lines of right to life and liberty and choice, you can have a partner of your choice if you are adult. But it is not a law in India. And the Supreme Court also told that it is up to the parliament to make a law legalizing living relationship. Whereas in European countries, it is a legalized thing. But in India, it is not legalized thing. It is just interpreted under Article 21 of the Constitution by the Supreme Court. Why? Because Indian society did not accept it. Means what? Why we are not making the law? 
native conduct our native conduct will not accept live in relationship if for example i will tell you tomorrow if the bjp government go with live in relationship legalization they will make a law government will not form 2024 they will lose like anything but because bjp is known for tradition bjp is known for conservative but you people accepted live in relationship means all the people will not means what is the meaning every law will come from native conduct our native conduct is marriage not live in relationship law of order and maintenance every law is to maintain order every law is to have a maintenance main 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 biggest target is what law and order maintenance the mechanism of law enforces when breach occurs where in simple societies the mechanism the law will be enforced when the breach occurs in simple society but in complex society the law will be enforced before the breach occurs like preventive detention yes or no but in simple societies the mechanism whatever the law is there will be enforced only if breach occurs so these are the laws which coming from need based by malnovsky law of cultural determinism law of native conduct law of order and maintenance and law of the law will be enforced if and only if the breach finally criticism extreme form of you are telling that every culture every relationship if there is a function then only it will flourish if not it will not flourish my father is not paying my fees whether the relationship of father and son will come to an end but according to everything is function so that extreme form of functionalism is functionalism might be correct but not extreme form of function everything cannot be calculated from the point of view of today teacher might taught somewhere in our 7th class or 8th class or 10th class our culture will tell that we have to respect our teacher yes it might be me or it might be your 10th class teacher also come we will try to give respect to him he is of no use but still but you are telling that if he is useful then only we will so extreme form of functionalism is criticism according to malnovsky biological needs are seen to be the center of malnovsky's discussion this was criticized because he considered culture as a sole mechanism to fulfill the individual needs you are talk you are talking only about biological needs you are talking only about individual needs sometimes needs are not everything everything cannot be calculated from the point of view of needs your mother or father when you are in the process of growing she might help you so you respected your mother now your mother became old because of your mother you don't have any function happening why because she became old whether we are going to leave according to you whether we are going to leave the mother according to you why because she is not at all helping me in my individual needs helping me in my biological needs whether i am going to abandon her so everything cannot be calculated from the points of view of individual needs or everything cannot be related from the point of view of biological culture satisfying the human needs is criticized because satisfaction itself is a psychological thing for me what is satisfaction might not be satisfaction for you you are telling satisfaction satisfaction that satis what is satisfaction man satisfaction is a psychological concept if i am hungry if i eat white rice whether my needs are satisfied satisfaction cannot be measured satisfaction doesn't have any add stick satisfaction cannot be a measurement why because satisfaction itself is a psychological concept which cannot be measured or understood rc brown criticized malnovsky by saying Malnovsky, for you, individual needs are more important. Whereas for R.C. Bond, needs of society is Babu, Malnovsky. You for you, individual needs are important. But remember, if society is happy, obviously the individual will be happy. You have to think about societal needs. Society, how they have to stay together. So societal needs are important rather than individual needs. So R.C. Bond, then Malnovsky got angry. 
okay you tell me how societal needs are important then rc brown told that wait i will give theory called as structural function so it is not the individual needs which is important but it is societal needs which is important when the society is happy obviously the individual will be happy why because for individual if society is given then obviously i will be happy for example if my needs are given by the society then i will be happy this is what criticized by on malnovsky finally he concludes that each trait performs its functions for satisfaction of individual need if the individual needs are not satisfied by the trait that particular cultural trait will degenerate final conclusion this is about malnovsky's functionalism tomorrow i will take pyqs and diffusionism very interesting very different also so any doubts on functionalism any doubts hmm? ah for example if he asks about functionalism 10 marker direct functionalism 10 mark functionalism is a concept which is given by malnovsky he explained about the main functions of culture the main purpose of the culture is satisfaction of individual needs if individual needs are not satisfied then the culture will not be existing then in that process he explained about the needs there are three needs basic needs derived needs and integrational needs basic needs culture traits derived needs are behaviors integrational needs are religion and art so the same thing one one paragraph we have to write and finally we have to conclude that the main purpose of the culture is satisfaction of individual needs if it is a 20 marker elaborate if it is 15 marks little bit elaborate 10 markers bullet points one one contribution one one point nine points you have to get so what are the contributions on field work on culture on theory of functionalism on theory of needs on theory of social change on theory of law on theory of magic art religion on theory of economic anthropology one more on theory of kinship clear that is his overall understanding yes overall understanding which is his original thought process like culture main purpose is satisfaction of individual is understanding after studying all this okay there is one expedition called as tourist trade expedition expedition they went on to do an adventure there is a tourist trait one trait is there above new zealand two land bodies one water body that is called a strait in that strait lot of tribal communities are there so in 1880 one tourist trade expedition from cambridge university started for anthropological studies rc brown malnovsky wh r rivers really big big anthropologist came so with them rc brown with them malnovsky came so they traveled for four months and they went there learning process happened for four months and settled then he studied there so mainly because of tourist trade expedition he was very much interested in anthropology also Margaret Mead and Ruth Benedict, his own students, they followed him. Some people did differently. His students, Margaret Mead, Ruth Benedict, just extended what he told. Those students also there.
he, 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 ah, see what will happen i will tell you see if you are saying in delhi you are searching for a room you got a roommate unfortunately his anthropology is different and he already written a mains and he got very good marks you already wrote mains and you got less marks whether you will be attracted you will be really you will be looking at him influence some or the other factor influence geographer turned anthropologist because when he went to america he started studying in cambridge there he found all these people so he was more interested and my that field people are more so obviously i will be Okay. Thank you. Tomorrow we will.